now that we've taken a look at the pieces of the cube, the faces, the edges, the vertices, and also what happens when you open a cube up, the net, now we're going to take a look at the calculations. Calculations in geometry are not difficult. The only thing that's confusing is what formula do you use? We will start working more with the PSSA yellow formula sheets. They have all the formulas you need as a 7th and 8th grader. Somewhere on here should be the formula for either the surface area or the volume of a particular shape. What we're going to do is focus on the shape of a cube, but we're going to look at surface area first. As you remember, surface area is the number of squares it takes to cover an object. If I were to draw squares in, how many squares would it take to cover every piece of this? The formula is this, SA, surface area equals 6 times S to the second power. This is an S, not a 5. S stands for the side length. Why is there not a length and width in a cube? That's right, because cubes are the same length on every edge. That's what makes it a cube and not a rectangular prism. So imagine if we had a side length of 3. Take my formula. When we go to do our work, we will drop right in with the substitute variables. Yes, we need to show our order of operation so we clean up any messes. Please, do not just write the answer. So SA, this is my first line that we'll start with. SA equals 6 times 3 squared. I have multiply, I have exponents. Exponents goes first, 6 times 9. SA equals 6 times 9, 54. Question is, what's my label? Well, you did surface area. What did you just get done counting? You counted the number of squares it took to cover the object. So my label is squares. I don't care inches, feet, meters. That's not as important as the idea of counting squares is. Surface area, 54 square whatever. Inches, feet, again, does not matter. Now, we can also take a look at the volume of a cube. That seems redundant. Volume is the number of cubes. Yes, the number of cubes in a cube. Volume, again, is what I just said, number of cubes it takes to fill an object. So inside this object, how many little cubes does it take to fill it? The formula is volume V equals S times S times S. Now that should make sense, length times width times height, but it's all S because it's all the same length in a cube. You can write out S times S times S, but we hopefully are a little bit smarter algebra-wise than this. There's a shorter way to write S times S times S. What is it? S to the third power. This will give us the same result, S times S times S. So if I had a cube and its side length was 10, go to my formula. Again, this is what we'll write on our homework. This is where we drop in. Volume equals 10 to the third power. So this would be my first line of work. My next line would be whatever calculations need done. V equals 10 to the third is 1,000. Labels are very important. Is this squares or is it cubes? Did I find volume? Did I find surface area? I clearly found volume. Volume is the number of cubes. So my label is cubes. 1,000 cubes it would take to fill up this thing. To make 10 wide, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, it would take me 1,000 cubes to make this thing if I were to build it up. I don't care about feet. I care that it is labeled with cubes. Please make sure that you label. There's a huge difference between cubes and squares, two different. One last aspect of this shape and volume and surface area concept we're going to go through is the idea of working backwards. How can you use the formula 
to work backwards to find maybe not the volume or surface area, but one of the singular measurements. So I want you to imagine this. You have a cube. Somebody already did the work. They found out that my answer is 486 squares. <clears throat> but the question is, what was the side length? And you could sit there and say, well, let's try some different numbers. Remember, surface area equals 6 times s squared. Uh, let's try 4. Uh, 4 squared times 6. You can do that. It's guess and checking. You can do that for a lot of stuff. The point is, can we use algebra to work backwards to solve for a missing variable? The answer is yes, we can. We do have all of the tools we need. I will show you one more tool today. So I'm going to take my formula, my blank formula, SA equals 6 times S squared. It's this formula because it said surface area. It didn't say volume. So what I'm going to do is take my formula and fill in variables. Do I know what goes in for S? I don't. I have to leave that stay in S. Look at the problem you were given. You have the number 486. Where does that go into the problem? It does not go in for S because S is not equal to 486. What is equal to 486? This variable. It is a variable. Yes, it's two letters, but it is a variable. SA. So SA is equal to 486. So I'm going to substitute variables. 486 equals 6 times s squared. Let's do some solving. I need to get s all by itself. I'm going to get rid of the multiplied number. How do I get rid of a multiplied 6? Look back on the poster. How do I get rid of a multiplied number? Multiply by the reciprocal of it. 6 is 6 over 1 times this side by 1 over 6 times this side by 1 over 6. The 6's cancel out. 6 on top crosses off with 6 on bottom. What is the only thing I have left on the right hand side? S to the second power. What do I have on this side? Four, eight, six times one, A, B, C, six equals eighty one. I'm going to put this off to the side just so we remember. Now, here's the new thing I have to show you. You kind of know how to do this already. Because Mr. Long gave you a packet we've been working on at the beginning of class. This says 81 equals S to the second power. I am not done solving because I don't have S by itself. What is the opposite of squaring a number? Square rooting a number. In order to get rid of an exponent of 2, you must put the square root symbol over top of it. Here's what it looks like. Square root the right hand side. Legally what the square root does is it gets rid of the exponent of 2. What's the only thing I'm left with? Cross off the, cross off the square root, cross off the 2, I'm left with s. In algebra if you do it to one side you must do it to the other. I square rooted the right, I must square root the left. What is the square root of 81? The answer is 9. So this last piece, remember, a square root removes it removes an exponent. Now the exponent has to be a power of 2, but it gets rid of it. So what did you find out? What is the side length for this cube? It's not a question mark anymore. It is the number 9. How could you check it? 6 times 9 squared. 
6 times 9 squared, 6 times 81. Does 6 times 81 give you 486? I hope it does. Pieces of a cube, edges, faces, vertices. Open up a cube, get a two-dimensional object, which folds to make a three-dimensional, that's called a net. I can find surface area, how many squares does it take to cover? I can find volume, how many cubes does it take to stack up and fill? And lastly, I can work backwards. Take a formula, put in the answer, solve to figure out what the missing variable is. Good luck, it seems like a lot, but you take it step by step and you'll get it done.